Hi everybody, my name is Becky and I'm coming to you from Saskatchewan, Canada. And this is the first episode of For the Love of Knit. I was trying to think of why do another knitting podcast because there are so many. And I decided that um, I really wanted to present myself in a format that is visual. Um, as knitters, most of us are very tactile people. And so for me, it's much easier to show off yarn or a project um, and visually see it than to um, hear about it on an audio podcast and then have to go and look the project up either during or after the podcast. You can find me on social media, on Instagram and Ravelry. My screen name on both of those is knitgirl2006. I think I would like to try to um, share podcasts every week that I enjoy listening to. I've been learning a lot uh, from Candice on Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast, and she is fantastic. I identify her on with her on so many levels. Um, and I just really like how casual she is and really makes um, me want to sign up for things like knit alongs and things like that, which I never would have considered doing in the past. She's also been the one that um, really has inspired me to start my own knitting podcast. Um, so for... Um, for podcasts that I would encourage you to watch, I would definitely encourage um, you to catch up with Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. The other podcast that has been really inspirational to me as of late is Kristen, sorry, Kristen on Yarngasm podcast. And she too is just an amazing um, knitter. Uh, she dyes her own yarn, which she sells online, and I haven't had a chance yet to uh, purchase any of her yarn. Um, I just came across her podcast just very recently. I've maybe watched her last five, and um, from what I understand, her product sells out very quickly, um, but someday I think I'd really like to try to purchase some of her stuff um, and she's also really um, a fantastic sewer and um, she's sort of gotten me interested in digging out my sewing machine and maybe starting to do a few little things like project bags um, um, you know I think I must be living under a rock because um, there's all these great products for knitters. I have um, seen people showing off project bags, um, progress keepers, beautiful stitch markers, um, which I, I didn't even know those products were out there. And so this is another reason why I really like the format of um, vis uh, video podcasts because you can physically see these things, which, like I say, I, I've never noticed them before or been aware that they're available. So um, for that, I find this format is a great place to learn. For projects, um, for finished objects, I, I'm just going to show you one this week because I just want to kind of try out this format. Um, but this is sort of one of my most recent finished products. And it is the uh, the Maleficent Shawl by Thimble and Pearl. And it is knit in Knitology Silk DK Weight um, it's a 50% superwash merino and 50% silk. Um, I subscribe to Knitology, um, to the Independent Dyers um, subscription. 
and this was these were the colors that I received for the month of March and it was um, the Dyer mood board was inspired by Downton Abbey um, I'm guessing just as the series has wrapped up and I'm just working through it on Netflix and it's it's fantastic if you love period kind of films or television shows it's fantastic um, it's actually I'll just show you here um, it's quite a large um, shawl it's triangular worked from the top down and the purple colorway is called Dowager Countess and the speckled yarn is uh, Ladies of Downton. And I'll just bring it in a little closer so you can see. Uh, so there's, there's the purple there, really pretty colorway. And then of course the speckled yarn is the Ladies of Downton. Um, it was a really fast project to work on. It only took me about a week, I think, to knit it up. Um, I would have probably done it a little bit quicker, um, except that uh, I, I work full time, which I need to do in order to uh, fuel my yarn diet, which I think most of you can identify with. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll put um, a link for the shawl pattern. It was from Ravelry. I'll put that in the show notes. Uh, for works in progress, I have a couple of things that I've been working on. Um, the first one is the um, Huhui shawl. I think that's how you pronounce it. By Hohi Locatelli. And she is an amazing designer. Her... Her designs are transcendent. It's sort of also, it's knit from the top down and it's a crescent shape um, shawl. And um, so I'm knitting it in. Now for this um, sock yarn that I'm using as the neutral part of the shawl at the top it, it 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 goes from a neutral color to a medium tone to a darker tone so I'm using um this sock weight yarn and I'm not sure how to get my camera really to focus anyway there's browns and there's blues and every now and then you'll find a little speckle of of pink um Unfortunately, I don't have the details on it. It was a sock yarn I purchased years ago. Um, started knitting a pair of socks with them and I really didn't care for the pattern. So I ended up ripping out the sock pattern and it's been years. And so I don't even think I have the, um, the band anymore for the information. I believe it was a superwash sock yarn. That's all I can tell you. Um, but this is um, sort of how it's knitting up. And right now I'm working on the wedge uh, lace kind of part of the, the pattern. Um, it's a really nice project. I absolutely love it. Um, the medium tone, I'm going to pair that. So I've got my, my brown here or I guess cream mixed with browns. And then I've got this orange, which I'm going to use for the neutral, or sorry, for the medium um, transition. And it is a Malabrigo sock yarn. And it is, the number is 802 Terracotta. It's a superwash merino wool. Um, when I was actually winding it on the ball winder, it snapped. So I actually have two, um, two cakes, um, about the same size. I think Candace from Pin Feathers and Pearls had a similar incident, <laughs> but you can maybe see where the, where the, uh, 
where it snapped. I don't know why it did. Kind of really ticks me off when that happens. But what do you do? Um, the border along the bottom of the wrap is a darker tone. Um, but this is the uh, yarn. I'm going to try. I don't know because the colors shift so much. I don't know how that's going to translate in the border. Um, but I picked it because it's got these beautiful orange tones. It has sort of this caramel um, color, which I think would go quite well, you know, with that. But then it's got these terrific blues and purples. And there's this fantastic teal color here. It's absolutely beautiful. Anyway, it's Mano's del Uruguay um, Alegria and it is a 75% superwash merino and 25% polyamide so I'm really hoping that, um, that that works I guess worse comes to worse I can always rip it out um, but I really I just love this yarn like I really hope it works because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, the other thing that I'm working on right now, okay, here's an example of my project bags. Normally, um, I, I didn't know that there were these tremendous bags available on Etsy and, you know, through um, um, people's online shops and things like that. I use like reusable shopping bags like not the plastic ones but now this one is from lululemon and i'm not a huge lulu supporter um i think it's kind of redonkulous that people spend the kind of money that they do but i bought a toque for running um that was on sale after christmas and came in the bag so um anyway i'm working on a pair of jay walker socks by Grumperina and so it's got this really nice zigzag kind of pattern to it and it's going fairly well this is the um, um, the yarn that I'm using um, you can't really tell here because the Sun is kind of behind the building behind me um, but um, it's um, the colorway is called double knockout rose and it's got 75% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. And so you get this pretty sparkle, but I don't know if it's really translating with my light right now. Um, anyway, every now and then maybe you get a little bit of a sparkle. I'm not sure. Um... It's second pair of Jay Walkers I've made, and so I find it's a really easy pattern to do. It's pretty easy to memorize as you're going along, um, which is helpful. I had it out the other day when I was uh, helping out with soccer kickoff day. Um, we had a big camp here in town, and um, so I helped out um, with that. And... Um, it just gave me something to work on when I was selling product for the soccer club and just gave me stuff to work on when um, I didn't have people purchasing soccer socks and maybe I can make some of those. I don't think my daughter would wear them though, but anyway. Um, so those are what I've got for works in progress. This yarn is also from my Knitology subscription and it came I think it was part of the December uh, shipment um, but I got two skeins of it and there's I think about 400 yards or meters in each of the skeins so I might make a nice couple of pair of socks or some other little things I do have a stash acquisition to share with you. Uh, again, it's from the Knitology um, 
independent dyers. And oh, I don't have the mood board card, but it was inspired by um, the season finale of The Walking Dead, which was a fantastic finale. It was probably my favorite finale of all the seasons. But the name of this color weight is Walker's Delight. And um, so it's got lots of grays, creams, reds. And one of the um, suggested projects, they, they'll send a suggested project um, card um, with usually three Ravelry pattern suggestions. And the Maleficent shawl pattern was suggested for this one. And I'm thinking I may do that. But maybe I might try something different. I don't know. Um, the other ones were, there was another shawl and I can't remember the name of it. But the other one, um, the other pattern suggestion was um, Retreat Cowl. So I was going to check that out tonight and see if that might be something that might be interesting. I tried to think of something that I wanted to share on my podcast that would be something different. And um, for myself, and I know there are a lot of knitters out there who are runners, and I have last maybe year and a half, two years, taken up running. I'm not the fastest runner. Um, I actually saw a t-shirt one time and it said, had a picture of a turtle and it said, I run like a turtle through peanut butter, stampeding through peanut butter, something like that. But I'm thinking I totally need to find that t-shirt because that is how I feel when I'm running. But, you know, I'm not the fastest, but I run for stress management um, and I'm currently training for my second half marathon, which is coming up at the end of May. And this year, my husband is going to be running it with me. Well, not with me. He's a faster runner. His stride is amazing, uh, as is his pace. Um, so I told him just to wait for me at the finish line and cheer me in as I kind of lumber around the corner. But um, I'm excited to do it again. Um, one of the... Um, things that um, uh, I want to talk about for running is uh, running apps. Um, and there's two that I'm going to talk about this week. Uh, one is called if you're really into zombies, which I love The Walking Dead and I love um, Fear the Walking Dead and, um, and even spoof zombie movies like Shaun of the Dead is hilarious. But um, if you really are into that sort of thing, there's a really great running app called Zombies Run. And um, it's really fun. What it does is it tells um, a story from you're in a post-apocalyptic world and you are a runner and you're sent out to find supplies for your camp and to bring them back. And so while you're out running, it'll tell the story and then it plays some songs from your playlist and alternates back and forth. And uh, as you're running along, you pick up supplies. So it might say you've picked up a bat or battery supplies or first aid kit, clothes, whatever. And when you get back from your run, um, there's sort of a game aspect to it. And so you get so many points and then you um, can apply them within your game and um, and you build up your base camp and with that your population builds and you help the camp and you are runner five um, so it's a really fun app and there's a new one that they've been really promoting lately there's been a lot of hype for it and it's called fit for battle and it sounds like it's going to be the same idea as Zombies Run, except it's going to have more of a fantasy, medieval, 
Game of Thrones kind of flair. So I think you get chased by like dragons and you have to fight orcs and nerdy stuff, which I'm kind of pumped about. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk about those apps because um, you don't have to run. You don't have to be a runner, um, but um, it just gets you moving. Um, a lot of people will disable the chases, say for zombies run, and um, uh, so you can walk. And then when they'll say something like, you know, run, there's zombies coming, you just pick up your pace a little bit. Um, the first time I actually did zombies run app, I was out and running about town. And um, the way they've recorded it is amazing because it sounds like the zombies are actually coming up behind you and logically you know that they're not there but I did look over my shoulder because I was quite convinced there was something behind me like it's just so well recorded and the storyline is really fun and um, for you Canadians out there there is um, uh, an episode I think they've got like four or five seasons out now um, but one of the seasons I'm going to say in season two or three has Margaret Atwood who is a Canadian author and she is part of the Canada episode and um, so that was pretty cool because I'm a big reader too and uh, grew up reading some of her books and stuff and so anyway um I won't bore you with uh, any more of the running stuff but um, I think I may have that as part of my podcast because it's something I enjoy and it's something that I haven't seen in other knitting podcasts and I know that there are people who run um, who knit and I just thought it would be a little bit of a unique twist for for my podcast um, and I think I'll wrap it up here I think every week I'm going to try to end it with a thumbs up thumbs down section um, my thumbs down was going to be for Canada Post actually because um, with my monthly knit crate subscription um, it seems that Canada Post takes about three weeks for them to deliver now it may get hung up at cost customs um i'm not sure but um once it crosses the border it seems to take about three weeks to get to me so that's been kind of ticking me off a little bit and i was going to um put it as a thumbs down because i've been waiting for this shipment I've been waiting for this shipment since when did I get the notification? Uh, April 8th, I think it is. And I just got it on May 2nd. And guaranteed in about six days, I'm going to get a notification that the next shipment is going out. And I'm going to have to wait who knows how long to get that anyway so that's kind of my thumbs down for this week um my thumbs up is for all of you because when I first posted my hype trailer on Facebook I was blown away because it had almost a thousand views and um I didn't really think people would be that interested and I've even had people express interest who are not knitters that they want to watch the episode um, or the podcast I don't know maybe they'll continue to watch it I don't know because it is a knitting podcast maybe they'll get turned on to knitting who knows um, anyway it's just really blown me away and then I had trouble uploading my first episode which I had actually recorded and we live in a rural town in Saskatchewan and the internet here is very sketchy and so um, 
had a real tough time uploading it. And I thought last night, this isn't going to work. In a fit of rage, I actually deleted the episode. And so we got our internet looked at today and things were rewired. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give this a try again. And um, we'll just see how it goes. I keep staring at my screen and I apologize for that. I think I have to be looking up at the little camera button. So I've probably been staring down at the screen the whole time, which means I'm not making eye contact with people, which I have trouble with anyway. So I apologize for that. Um, I'll try to get better. Um, anyway, I'm going to try to post weekly. Um, I think normally I'll record on Saturdays and try to upload the video on Sunday. Um, but because I'm doing this now, um, maybe I will see how that goes. Um, I know this Saturday I have an event to attend, but I think maybe I could probably, um, um, record maybe Saturday night. Sorry, I'm outside on my deck. Somebody just drove by. Anyway, maybe I'll have to record inside, but I wanted to record from on my deck in the gazebo because it is probably one of my favorite places to knit. Uh, it's very peaceful normally. I'm thankful that a train hasn't blown through town because where we live, like right across the street, we have um, train tracks and usually a train blows through and it's pretty loud. Um, so I'm thankful that I didn't get interrupted this time. Um, but I think that's all for this episode. Thank you again for joining me. And if you liked what you saw or want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. And I will see you again in about a week's time. Take care. Bye.